Welcome to Insight. Today we're chatting with Hope Auswang, Executive Director and CEO of the Norton Museum of Art. Hope has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I thank you, Hope, for joining us today. I'm thrilled to be here, Mark. I always enjoy the opportunity to talk to you. So the Norton has gone through so many different changes, and it, it, when you actually took it over, it had already gone through a major expansion, a, a major shift, and you are in the midst of another major shift in the physical footprint of the, uh, uh, of the museum and, and in its programming. Talk about change and managing change in a museum like the Norton. So, so you land in an organization, you're a new executive director. It's very hard to know what people want and what they need, and they're not always the same thing. So I think the question for us in the beginning was, who does the Norton want to be? We had to find a voice. Um, and that was a lot of discussion in multiple communities. Like, there's obviously what I would call our, our real audience, which are the regular people who live in West Palm Beach and in Palm Beach County. Then there are our donors who are among the most influential and wealthiest people probably in the country, if not the world. So one of the things, the first things I did was convince the board that these were not mutually exclusive, that we actually could be multidimensional. You could serve multiple interests simultaneously. Exactly. And that that had been a very big contradiction for them. They had a lot of trouble. They weren't against it. They just didn't understand how to make those two or five, let's say five realities, all work together. And part of the issue is that when you come out of uh, environments, business environments mm -hmm. and so on, where you're negotiating and there are winners and losers, right. uh, to come to a way of thinking in which you can actually only have winners, right. if you are elegant in execution, is, yes. is, is a transition. I always want to work for an institution that really is prepared to discuss inclusion. And that means inclusion with audiences, including inclusion with our exhibitions, inclusion with what we, um, our acquisitions. And when I talked to my board before, when I was being hired was, is there a, is, is there a commitment to inclusion? Even if they don't know what that means completely. You know, you, know, you raise a very interesting yeah. question because at the point when a museum director leaves and moves on. At that point, the board is looking at an inflection and so often they don't know exactly what they are seeking. But they are going to get somebody with a point of view and you have a point of view. Right. So how, when you came in, did you convey this sensibility to the board? Because the real question was whether your sensibility was something that they were enjoy experiencing over the next years. So in an interview process, I would say to anybody, really listen, because you're going to hear things about what their aspirations are and who they are that they're not completely even aware they're saying. And that, and you have to ask questions that aren't aggressive and are not necessarily you know, tricky that help elicit what's in their hearts. And that, I think, is a big issue. It doesn't mean there aren't going to be surprises. But right. I think that there was a definitely a spirit that they wanted, in the broadest sense, to be a more useful museum and to have a stronger place um, in the community. They just hadn't, it, it takes a long time for those things to come together. And they were discovering from you as well. They were eliciting from you information about what your authentic sensibility right. is. Exactly. So, so you, you go through this process, you get selected and now you go through your listening phase where you're really trying to understand the community, you're under trying to understand the players. You're not making a huge number of changes just, just right off the bat. You're listening, but you also have an agenda. And I had a clear agenda. And that was, as I said, to be an inclusive institution. But I'm also deeply committed, you know, that our exhibitions and our collecting reflect a broader sense of our culture, which means more artists of color and a lot more women. And that was never explicitly said, but I did say to them, I think we have to be very broad in how we understand what a museum does. And I feel really strongly that ultimately in the final analysis when I leave, when, you know, when we're got this wonderful building built, you know, the building will be a great legacy, but the real legacy is that we will have a collection. We'll have purchased, let's say, a hundred fantastic things over my tenure that will be there forever, which changed the nature of our collections. We have infinitely more women artists being bought. Last year we bought 19 in, in things that we think are important, mostly from emerging and mid-career artists. 11 of them were by women. That never happened in the past. And out of that 19, I think 
eight of them are artists of color. And when you select an object, are you selecting an object in dialogue with the current collection to rebalance the collection? Are you selecting it based on where that object fits in the, in the art world? Is it all of the above? For us, always the issue is, is it as good? Do we believe it's as good as our founding foundation? One of the great heroes in our business, who was the director of the Wadsworth Athenaeum, uh, Chick Austin, always said, if you get this 10% right when you're collecting living artists, you'll do right. really well. And that's sort of my goal. You know, if, if maybe, I'd like to say probably 25% of the artists we, we're choosing now are going to turn out to be really exceptionally important historically. Well, isn't risk part of art? I, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so you are also expanding the footprint. So there's a, there's a business element to this mm -hmm. as well, uh, because you need to have a facility that is scaled to the size of your ambition for the community. Talk about the transformation that you've been undertaking. We reinvented who we were, which was we used to say we were the best museum in Florida or the best regional museum, and that didn't work with our, with our donor audience, and, so, and it wasn't accurate. So we re rethought that, and what we say now is we aspire to be a really outstanding uh, museum that is part of the national international conversation. Having said that, we also want to believe that international collectors are going to come and people of enormous influence, uh, but we also want to be very public. So how does that manifest within an architectural footprint? Well, we had a less than welcoming entrance. We now have a huge entrance on a major highway and we turned the building around to face the, the, the you know, to face the community. Come in. Come, come in, in, right. With, <laughs> and it's very transparent on that side. So the idea was that was to bring the sort of Floridian sense. We wanted the museum to have a sense of place. So you also refer to the fact that you wish to uh, be in dialogue mm -hmm. internationally. Yeah. How does that express itself in terms of your exhibitions and your programming? We're very lucky. We had a fantastic grant um, from a foundation actually in San Francisco, the Sophia and Leonard Davis ML Foundation, which is fantastic, who gave us money for a six-year program of art by, by women, by living, uh, living artists. And um, that's been a very transformative opportunity for us. First off, we're very committed to women artists, and it's allowed us to do really amazing exhibitions. So recently we did Njedeka Crosby, who has become probably the hottest young uh, Nigerian-American artists imaginable, and we were able to purchase work. So we have had, and I'll send you some, just unbelievable press. So it's those kind of things. It's, it's no different than any cultural organization. The programs we do drive our visibility, and we're very keen on making sure people know how incredibly innovative we are, particularly in the area of really being committed to women artists. Talk about the, the audience mix, the evidence that you are being inclusive in terms of attendance, in terms of the cohorts. We're in construction now, so only about 45% of the museum is open. So I went to them and said, look, there's going to be lost income anyway. We don't have a restaurant. Let's make the museum free. And let's see where it takes us. So we went free uh, six days a week, uh, July 5th. And we're very tiny. Our admissions are up 6%, which surprised me completely. But what's fantastic is we went from having 8% visitors of color to over almost 31% visitors of color. Our numbers for people under 40 shot up. Of course. Because we're free. I don't think we'd ever go completely free for a variety of reasons, including our membership issues. But I mean, wouldn't it be great if we open with two free days? You know, I get someone to fund that. And now people are really excited. They love the fact that they come into the museum when they have a committee meeting and they see, like, incredibly diverse community. The, the boost in attendance really are from people who cannot afford, um, where they are making a decision in terms of, of expending this very rare dollar here or there. And no matter how much they love their child, there are limits that they can do. So now you've basically opened those limits and, and you've really allowed those people to experience this heritage of, uh, of, of this region and, and the United States and the world. I, I think we've gained something else with our visitors, which is they now feel they can drop in for 40 minutes. You know, they're not, they don't have to get their money's worth. You know, I believe really strongly that just saying free makes people comfortable, you know, who are not used to museum going because they don't understand what's going to be expected of them. That makes them 
nervous or self-conscious and less likely to come. So when you say free, they like it and they should, we like them. When is the museum going to, when is this project going to be completed? When is the grand opening going to take place? The grand opening will be late 2018 or early 2019. So we're talking about just two years from now. Um, and I think it will be uh, one of those remarkable moments in our community. And, and, and for our donors, you know, it's a hundred million dollar project. And we're at $64 million. We've done remarkably well in fundraising because I think people really recognize the importance of building a great institution. So that's been really uh, very important. And I think everyone's very excited. So it's a very exciting time. Well, Hope Auswang, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Norton, your philosophy, the philosophy of your board, the journey that you have together uh, traversed uh, with the community. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much.